Sorry, uh, it would help if I t turned on the microphone. So thank you so much for that. Uh, welcome, my name is Paul Training. I'm gonna dive into getting started as a professional designer. Cause look, I'm professional, I have a tie on, right? And glasses, which are not needed. So nonetheless, uh, we're gonna dive into this. And uh, thank you, good to have you all here. You should hear me just fine. Feel free to say hello and that you could hear me in chat. That would be great. Uh, it's reading loud and clear for me. So just waiting for a response from chat. It usually takes like 30 seconds, which is why I ramble. All right, so can you hear me? Just let me know. Are we good? We're good. All right, fantastic. Let's dive into this, shall we? Uh, this is day two, so I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and we're gonna get this party started. We mean business. There's no time to have a tie on, right? Uh, getting started as a professional designer. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, good to hear. So we will take a stab at this. And um, not only take a stab, we're gonna dive into creating a portfolio as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen uh, as you can see right here. So this is basically what we created yesterday. It's pretty straightforward. So just go to File, New, Document, right? And actually what we ended up using is we went to um, the uh, recent uh, file, new document. And we created this from uh, a print. There we go, it's loading up now. Ah, oh, what a day. So this is actually what we used, kind of went through some of these. We could use any one of these, whether it's a poster or whatever. Uh, I ended up using a, um, and it's good to download these and start using them right away. Here's a modern and clean resume. It's actually not the one I used. I used a different one with a black border. But there's free ones in here that you can kind of work with. You know, start from, grab it, download it, right? and then start replacing that content. We talked all about that content yesterday. We understand how it works. It's, it's pretty straightforward, um, you know, but again, f at least for me, so what's gonna happen right in here, by the way, when they get highlighted, it should take a second, but boom, do you see that? It went from pink to loading in the font. So if you don't have that font, um, you'll actually get a message that says, hey, you know what, you don't, you don't have these Adobe fonts. Would you like to sync them? And then also does it say, don't ask me again. How many people always hit don't ask me again? <laughs> Are you always selecting don't ask me again? Because that's what I did. Uh, and I'm like, don't worry about it. Just sync the fonts. Don't let me have to deal with it. And, uh, and uh, you can see we can go ahead and change this from Janet Smith. Sometimes with these, this is why I'm glad you guys are here with me. Um, you're gonna try to click on, say, the name up here. You're like, wait a minute, I, last time I checked, I'm not Janet Smith. Who's this Janet Smith? You'll go over here, you'll look at it, you'll look in your layers, you're like, ah, I can't click on it. Uh, typically, I look two places if something uh, isn't editable, is whether it's locked right over here in the layers panel, could be locked, or what it is, is it's a master page. So right in here, we'll double click on that master page. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we can change this to Joe Dorgu. This is Joe Dorgu's resume. Master graphic designer. There we go. Why not, huh? Right up here at the top, this could easily be your mission statement, right? And all of that good stuff. But that's in the master page. And then we can get into the experience and all that good stuff. A lot of times I'll change the um, uh, screen modes. So we could change this to preview just to really see what it looks like. And not only that, uh, if I have um, photos, I wanna make sure that this is set to high quality display, just cause it's more fun to work that way uh, if you uh, have a fast enough machine, okay? <laughs> uh, don't ask me again every time, Nor. I get ya. Thank you so much for joining me and hanging out. I got people from elsewhere. Let's just take a look. And um, thanks for hanging out today. All right. 
uh, everyone. Cool. All right. Fantastic. Joe is Adobe Famous. All right. Uh, Anthony, welcome. So Anthony has an interesting, interesting situation. Anthony Jackson, I see your name here. And uh, you are using, the, you like, you have a logo basically. So that's another thing we can actually integrate into these resumes. And it's also gonna carry over into our portfolio. So what do we do? We would potentially use Illustrator. By the way, can I just show you this embarrassing thing? Here I am in Illustrator, right? And uh, this is from uh, 20 years ago. But this is the logo I used, just like um, Anthony's using a logo. I was like, oh, I know, I'm gonna have this computer because there's those CRT monitors. I was like, yeah, it's like digital art and I'm kind of painting the computer, it'd be so cool. So this is actually what I used as a logo uh, 20 plus years ago. Uh, and I can go through all that and stuff and, and show you in general, but uh, you get the idea. I think it's fascinating, kind of go back into your old work and just see what that looked like. So right in here, even if we fast forward to uh, my resume, this is, I thought this was really cool at the time, right? Oh, I'll just go ahead and do this line. Oh, I can put a gradient back there. Uh, just because, might be a matte classic, who knows? Uh, just because you can add a gradient doesn't mean you should. And I did not learn that lesson. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a bevel like, and it's gonna be cool and a gradient. And I thought that was, and it could have been cool at the time. I don't see how it was to be honest with you, right? But look at this, mission statement, right? Personal qualities, right? So I kind of wanted to sell, say something about myself, my personal qualities, nobody cares. Here's the deal, great, you like yourself, good job, right? your potential employer really only cares about the benefit it adds to them. So don't have anything there. You don't need stuff in there. If you're talking about yourself, it's not about you. It's all about what you could do for your potential employer. So I honestly approached this all wrong. I should have been like, I'm excited to work for X company and blah, 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 blah. Should have been part of my cover letter actually. Um, but that's ultimately, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that personal qualities. I'm just looking at it for the first time. <laughs> All right, right in here, we can see right in here, we have links. And again, this is 20, this is 30 years old. I don't even know. What is this? 98, probably 2000, right? And I'm like, oh, let's check this out. I created these websites, right? Let's see what, if they ever are even in existence anymore. Probably not, right? Nothing is loading up. It's like trying to connect. Parsons, Brinker, Hoff, 4D. Hardly even knew what I, <laughs> the, uh, I think it took me six months to, before I even figured out what the company actually did. And uh, it was more like an engineering uh, architecture firm. Uh, so anyways, hopefully that's kind of helpful to kind of go through your old stuff, kind of take a look at it, uh, see what worked, what didn't, right? on down the line. Miscellaneous experience, this is what I said. It's like, even though you don't have a lot of professional experience, elevate, I wouldn't even call it miscellaneous. I'd call it freelance experience like we did right in here uh, in InDesign, right? We'd call that our freelance experience like so. Okay, cool. All right, the year you had your twins. All right. This is just silly. It's just so silly. Oh, my formal education. Oh, look. Oh, I graduated at the time and then rated all the programs that I felt like I knew well, right? At the time, it was After Effects. That was probably After Effects. I don't even know. I can't, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. I did not put the um, numbers in there, but it was pre, uh, pre, uh, Adobe acquisition of Macromedia. Uh, then I actually included a couple of, um, yeah, here's the cover letter, by the way. Cover letter, done. Awards and recognition, you guys get the idea. Cool, and that was fun to look at. I actually have other resumes that I can kind of open up from other people, uh, which are kind of interesting. Uh, but I wanna kind of shift gears. Again, if you're making a logo, jump into um, InDesign. Again, this is where I got sidetracked but it's based on Anthony's idea. We can go in and sort of create our own logo mark. A lot of times people use their initials. Totally cool, right? 
totally fine to start there. All right, there we are. Boom, boom. Right, taking these, maybe using the touch type tool and adjusting accordingly, try to make some sort of type lockup just to make my resume stand out in some way, shape, or form. Boom, bata, there we are. You guys get the idea. Let's change the font, right? This is a variable concept font, which I love because I can jump in and change that weight like so. Ultimately, it's like, what am I trying to say with this particular like word mark that I'm making? It's like, what is it even, tr what am I even trying to say? You know, you put, you put your initials in a box, congratulations. So again, should be done with a little bit more purpose, to be honest with you. Um, but again, I don't wanna to spend too much time on logo creation. All right, hello, Chris. Can I use these templates for an, uh, for design agency jobs, larger corporate job apps, something meant that is... Um, yeah, can you use the templates for design agency jobs? Yes, you can. The big thing about templates is other people might be using the exact same template. So for this template, are they gonna have, say, 10 resumes that roll by or using that same template? You always run that risk of somebody else having the exact same resume as you when you use a template. So yes, modify it uh, any way you see fit to make it uh, different, but uh, definitely not a problem using templates and I think it's a good place to get started. Right, right in here, we can take this, copy this, right? If you're not comfortable using your, like your photo, like I have right here, and remember this is part of the master, come in here and I could paste in and have this as an option. By the way, if I wanna keep two different options, I can actually duplicate that as well, but let's just drop this in, shrink this down, put that like so. Again, if you're not comfortable using your name, there you are. Let's go back to it. And we're back, cool, cool, easy. Uh, but again, uh, just think about what, what you're trying to say, I think, with your with a, whatever word mark you're using. Doesn't have to be your initials. I think this is probably as basic as you can get. Um, uh, yes, so Cornell, good, good question about using or creating a, a a resume or CV in XD, uh, totally cool. At the end of the day, you're going to need a you're going to need a print version, right? So here's our print version right here, nice and clean. Not a lot of use of black other than right here on the logo. We'll have our web version, and that's the version you can go ahead and make in XD. By all means, just so you know, what I did uh, back in the great idea. What I did back in the day is. Uh, I actually had an interactive PDF, which is probably, um, here we go. It's, it doesn't even work anymore, but basically um, you used to be able to make interactive PDFs, right? I'm not sure what state that's in today, but in InDesign, just like we add links right here, we can jump in to decide, hey, you know what? Let's place in a video, for instance. So here's a quick video. So rather than having my uh, word mark or a photo, what if it's an actual video that plays, right? So we select that MP4, come in here, place it right there, right? And now we have this video that could play. I don't know, I haven't done this in a bit. It's, 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 it's definitely, um, I don't know where we're at with interactive PDFs. Because a lot of these actually were based on Flash, but we'll go in, we'll go to media, Right, and here's the media. We'll click play, and all I'm doing is kind of smiling. Because I liked, I personally liked the idea um, of um, like something looking like a photo, but then coming to life, and you realize, hey, that the person actually moved. How cool is that? Anything that gives my resume an X factor, uh, like using XD, like dropping in a video, is gonna, is gonna make you stand out. So uh, definitely think it's a good thing. Play on page load. Uh, loop it if you can and uh, we can preview in the spread so this is for EPUB by the way but we can go ahead and preview it and there's that little video just kind of like smiling and it should loop right that's kind of fun 
a bit like Harry Potter. Exactly. What would you do? You would literally jump in, clean that up, by the way. It needs lots of work. Let's grab this one. This is After Effects. We're going above and beyond because that's what it's going to take to get the job that we want. Right in here, we can see that particular video. We will go to uh, Effects and we'll go key it out. There we go. We have it keyed out. And not only that, I would probably do a hue and saturation pop and just kind of remove that color. So now we have a black and white version. Black, black and white, boom. Let's drop that on, close that. I could have used just the black and white filter, but here's the reds that I can increase, the yellows. Let's turn off that one, there we go. You guys get the idea. Just playing with some of the contrast in fact, that's probably another filter I'd essentially add. As you can see like that, done, done, right? Export that out. Again, this is not about After Effects. I'm gonna quit out of that, but you can drop that in there and use XD. Cool? We all on the same page. Uh, oh, see, again, ton of cool things you can do. By the way, go into Interactive, all right in here. You can play with this content. Yeah, I'll take another one if you don't mind. I'm having more coffee. You should have used a skull, I agree, why not? So again, hi hyperlinks right in here, we could have object states. A lot of those things that you do in XD, you could do it in here as well, okay? That's done, I'm not crazy about that, I'm just gonna revert back to this version. That one looks fine, we've exported it out, we're good to go. We made our logo, by the way, I'd probably use something a little bit more unique. Wait for it. Here's another example, right? So I've made this before, this ambigram that I can actually embed into my PDF, right? It's just a fun ambigram that I could drop in right in that header and go ahead and have it play, right? So again, just something fun we can do to make us or help us stand out. All right. All right. <laughs> yes, Mallory, you really need to get in After Effects. The more things you learn, which is why I'm glad everybody's hanging out with me today, the more skills in your little repertoire, the better off you'll be because you'll be able to just stand out more. Okay, is that cool? All right, Mallory's into it. Cornell likes it, Kelly likes it, into it, cool. So again, we could have made that in uh, Illustrator, go into After Effects, do a quick little number, export out that video, and then kind of move on, right? The cool thing is, oh, thank you so much. The cool thing is, is that uh, maybe I don't wanna use this in my, um, on my resume per se, or my CV, I can actually roll that into my portfolio. So let's actually grab something. I was working on this the other day, Rhino. Let's actually do so many things I wanna do. So many things I wanna do right now. Breathe. There we go. Let's open on this Rhino. Bam, there it is. Super cool. Let's go to open as well. All I'm doing is grabbing this one that I want, right? It's like, okay, I created this in Illustrator. I wanna make this part of my portfolio, right? I think that looks pretty good. It's all vector-based, actually done in Illustrator on the iPad, by the way, has 16,000 points, right? Look at all these points, not even that many, right? It could actually have more. Um, but uh, what I wanna do here is just go ahead and export this out, right? We can do export for screens save it to my desktop. We're just gonna call it artboard. Sometimes if I want something twice the size, I can increase the scale right down here, but I'm just gonna export out this graphic to my desktop. There it is, actually. Thank you so much, boom. This is my new portfolio piece, awesome, right? So R-H-I-N-O, 
There we are. Cool. Now we can jump into behance.net forward slash not live, but forward slash create a project. <laughs> we did this yesterday. I'm going to move through this really fast. It's really easy to do. Bam, bam, bam. Here it is. Here's our image, right? Even above that, by the way, let's add some text. R H. This is actually for, um, all right, I know created in Illustrator on the iPad. There we go. There we go. We want this to be our title header done center it right beneath that. We want to have some additional text, right? Right down here. Boom. Create was and basically what I was doing is I was experimenting with the number of points created this mostly using the blob brush on uh, in Illustrator for the iPad, right? Uh, over 16,000 points. We could check the points if you're ever curious, like how many little vector points are there, right? Check this out. We can go to, first of all, I'd actually there's more because I added this tree and I added the grass back there. So let's just go select all. Did everything get selected? I was also playing with text in here, some, some other things. There we go. Everything is selected. We can see. Here's all the points. Go to object, path, simplify, right? If we go into simplify, right in here, it's going to try to apply it. I'm just using this dialog right here. I'll click right here. Boop. This is the classic simplify. Uh, ooh, I was. I was wrong. This has 93,000 uh, points in it. It's because of that crazy tree. All right. How many points? Illustrator, yes. Exactly. All the points. Uh, it's kind of like my shirt has about 1,000 points on it right now, okay? Because of that moray pattern. Uh, new formatting on Behance page. Does it update? Mm, not unless you tell it to update, is it going to update, okay? But there it is. Done, done. You guys get the idea. Let's get out of there. We're back in here. Over 96,000 points. Uh, and it performed quite well, so super happy with it. Let's take this down to 16. Bam, bam. There we are. Add your own sound effects, right? In here, I would say that looks pretty good. Really use to eliminate some of that spacing. And feel free, if you're building a portfolio, a lot of times people want to see uh, sort of the behind the scenes. So go in there, show them all these points. We could either do a screenshot right in here, just like that. Or we could do Command Y, and we could show all the points this way. Look at all those crazy points. Too many, right, like that. This might be even cooler just to kind of show and highlight what this looks like. So right down here, we can add a new one and I can make this a photo grid, for instance. So we'll add images, taking these two screenshots, opening them up, and there we have them down at the bottom. Um, so I can add some more padding or less padding. You guys get the idea. Cool. Bam. Okay. There we are. Project tags. Straight R. Uh, looks like Illustrator for iPad's not in there yet. Change that to Illustration. Publish. Done. Okay, Ariana, do you love adding your sound effects? Uh, so no, Carol, I didn't draw the tree. I grabbed the tree from somewhere. Just because I'm like, I'm not gonna, I, I just didn't draw the tree, so. But good question. I drew everything else, okay? Everything else, super easy. The tree, I was like, I'm just gonna grab something. That's when it went from, honestly, 
It went from 16,000 to 90,000 when I added the grass. This is the last time I remember doing the count. I added grass and then I added that tree and that brought it up to 96. So yeah. All right, so that's done. Right, there it is, tools being used. We can go back to my profile. A lot of you might know how to do this, but here's the situation that I have now, which is why I'm so glad everybody's joining me. Uh, right down here is, I kind of have some conflicting styles. A lot of it's like Photoshop based, but then you get into like Illustrator type stuff, right? And your portfolio might seem kind of scattered like this as well. Right? Illustrator, 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 Illustrator. Okay. Probably need to curate my um, uh, portfolio. Mural, good to have you. So the easiest way to have a portfolio is really just upload these projects to your Behance profile. Then we have this link that we could share with the world. Okay. Easy enough. Right? Let's take this a step further and create an Adobe portfolio, just like that. Now, right in here, Adobe portfolio are sort of out of the box templates that will take your portfolio, right? All your, your profile projects, all your projects and turn them into basically a website. So it's like uh, Squarespace, sorry about that kind of like a Squarespace sort of situation. But the cool thing is right down here, you get up to five sites. So if you're a Creative Cloud member, you get up to five sites that you can create and they can all have specific URLs. I have one here already finished. We're gonna make a new one, by the way, just because we can. New site, jump in here, take a look at all these gorgeous ones. I love these. I love this one. That's nice. Thomas, let's go with Thomas. Uh, could you explain Creative Commons licenses? Uh, there's different types of Creative Commons licenses. I'm not an expert by any means, but you want to look for Creative Commons Zero, okay? Uh, in the case of my, um, anyways, so we're looking at the theme now. In the case where I didn't draw that tree, I should actually draw that tree because somebody thinks that I actually drew it. So I should probably fix that, okay? But again, it was mainly just a study to figure out how, how far I could push Illustrator on the iPad. All right, cool, you get up to five sites. You're like, oh, check this out, this looks awesome. I love it, right? Let's go ahead and use this theme. Ba right there, one moment, please. This is where you get impatient, but then you realize that it's basically writing all the code and doing all this stuff. It's basically creating your website. You have a minute. <laughs> Just freaking drink some coffee and relax. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, has my name, right? And all of my work all of a sudden. Oh, so nice, right? We could preview it. As you can see right down here, this all gets very simple. Let me switch sides of my screen if I could. Bow, bow, there I am. Right down here, we can go ahead and preview it right away and see what this looks like. And honestly, I like to see the formatting to make sure there's no, you'll get widows for the names, in which case you might need to adjust either the font, the title, um, or the font size. One of those, right? So go in here, okay, let's take a look. Everything looks pretty good. I was very short with all of the, um, uh, the names. But I'm noticing, even though I like this Rhino, created in Illustrator on iPad, it doesn't really go with the rest of this. And if I'm gonna create a portfolio, I want it to have consistency. So I'm kind of actually thinking of excluding this project from my portfolio. All right, so right down here at the bottom, obviously you can see back to edit. Ah, let's go back to edit. Right in here, we could take a look at um, the pages. As I can go to the pages, we could see it just took all my projects and said, here they all are. They're all in your portfolio. Good luck, sucker. I'm like, mm, you know, this Rhino created in Illustrator, it's not quite ready for prime time. Okay, let's turn that off. Let's not include it. Okay. Uh, and that's what I do. And I curate this. There's a lot going on. But even some of these, I'm not even crazy about this. You'll notice near the bottom of anybody who has an, uh, 
and Adobe Pro, uh, Behance Profile will know some of your later projects are just not that good. I know that's the case for me. I'm gonna turn this one off. I don't need this, I don't need this, right? This 3D printed stuff, no. Like, I want the client or my potential employer to know what they're getting, knowing that I have like, like it's a voice, right? And, um, and not all over the map. So that's what I'm doing. Just kind of getting rid of some of these and we'll leave some of those others. Just turning them off from my portfolio, right? We notice right in here, what you can do is you can go in and edit the page title, right? So right in here, for this one, I would edit this page title and I would call this something else. Uh, I think it needs a clever name and I can't think of one right now. So we'll just go with Oh, I know, monolithic monarchs. Monolithic monarchs, oh, that's so cool. Very, very big butterflies <laughs> is all that is, okay? We curated, isn't that nice? Is this not easy? Does this not inspire you? I hope it does, right? We can go back, we can see the certain integration that's happening, we can see the 31 uh, Behance projects. If you have Adobe Lightroom, you can connect Lightroom as well to uh, publish as part of your Behance portfolio and everything gets imported into the work uh, page, right? We could look at our different pages. We have work, let's scroll down. We have our contact page right down here that we can de decide to include or not. Clicking on it, contact, let's edit it. Let's chat. There we go. Making look a little bit more friendly. That looks good. Let's go back. Let's go back to our main page. Here we are. Uh, and we can play some with some more elements in here. Yes, great Ariana, ah, oh, on cue, mm, love it. Oh, Ariana, thank you so much. So yes, would it be better if you had a custom URL for your portfolio le website, you amateur Paul? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Why am I picking on myself so much? Uh, we have a number of pages, we have the integrations, we have the themes, which we can always switch this to a different theme, like you'll do it like you're changing a shirt. You're always gonna wanna switch it up. Go into settings right in here. So uh, obviously right here at the top, the domain name, uh, purchase a domain or connect your domain. This is where you ultimately wanna go to whatever, whatever URL provider, domain provider that you, of choice and, um, or just actually click right here. What am I even talking about? Purchase a domain, <laughs> find a domain name. Let's do air, is that okay? I-Y-A-N-N-S portfolio. Ariana's portfolio, it's available right there, boom. Get Ariana's portfolio, it's gonna be arianasportfolio.com, right? Easy enough, plug it in, right? That way it doesn't have to be P Tranny at my portfolio. In fact, I wanna change it to Paul Tranny at least to make it a little bit more interesting and click done. Let's publish this. This is happening way too fast, by the way. Um, this is going way too fast. It's like within the first 30 minutes, we already have a portfolio website. Uh, not crazy right up here. I probably need to swap this out. Come on, man, have, have some personality, huh? That sort of thing. But right in here, we could see these are monolithic monarchs, clicking on those. Uh, and we can, s oh, I guess I have more in here uh, that I was working on, but essentially this is one, project and we can always go back in ah i already have it i have it two different places right that's okay still a chance that i could jump in and edit this so that's what i would do turn that off it automatically shuffles and gives me those live updates. I'm just gonna go ahead and publish that again. Thank you, Tim. 
That's way cheaper than I realized. Yes, you get five websites hosted, all that good stuff, as part of your Creative Cloud membership. So that's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. Awesome, Neil did it. I purchased a name for mine, yeah. Neil Kelly Photography, I'll have to check it out. Awesome. Okay, so by the way, we can go back in here. Um, I'm gonna hit edit Adobe Portfolio again, cause you'll see now I have this website and then I have this website. So I actually have, this one does have a custom URL. This is actually the one that I use. Edit site, let's take the one this is already baked, right? Let's go into integrations. Hold on one second, sorry, pages. Turn off that one. And there we go. Uh, you can see this one's a little bit more baked. We can um, check out that I actually added a background, right? Just added this like nice image, right? And the options for this. It's a fixed position uh, on page scroll. So it's not gonna scroll at all. It's not gonna repeat or any of that. Cover it at all, you get the idea. I could actually have it even scale the image, but that's what makes it so the background doesn't scroll, obviously, right? So this one kind of is looking a little bit better, right? Didn't worry about an overlay color. Actually, no, I did have a little bit of an overlay color, right? This is the original photo starts to wash out some of my text over here, which is why I've taken down the opacity. Let's update that live site. This is just fun to work with. Right on. And also for this one, let's go back to the editor. Go back. Uh, pages. So we have work, contact, then we have Instagram. You're like, oh, where did that come from? Love to have Instagram. It's uh, way more updated, honestly, uh, at least for the most part uh, than other pages. But right in here, I can go ahead and add a page. So I can go ahead and add a link. We'll call this Twitter. We'll go to my Twitter page. Here it is. Go ahead and yeah, shameless self-promo, that's fine. Paste that right in here. Uh, open link in new window, anytime I jump out to another site, I usually open link in new window. So let's go ahead and create that link and we can see it right up here, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I could take that a step further and add as many of those profiles as I want. Um, ultimately, I probably would, by the way, I would add this is what I talked about yesterday. It's like, honestly, you want to be everywhere. You want to have, um, you know, you want to know how Twitter works, how Instagram works, how Facebook works, how all those different platforms work, because all those are, are marketing avenues that you as a designer might publish to. So that's why I'd say, yeah, be everywhere. Even if you don't use Facebook, it doesn't have to be updated. But go to Facebook, go to, and, you know, have that, uh, public page is what uh, you could potentially have and drop that in there as well as soon as I find which one it is link because if you don't have your uh, Twitter name or Instagram name or snapchat name somebody else does right uh, done and done update live site let me know if you guys have questions Uh, could you use one of those five sites for a client? Yeah, um, those, yeah, exactly. So like Nora says, I don't think it's a good thing to do. Can you do it technically? 100%. You just have to remember that you do have a client site for this. This is what I would do, okay? So this is what I would do in this situation. I now have two portfolios. Let's get rid of a lot of these crazy pages. We go back, we'll go in here, 
I now have two portfolios. So what I can consider doing, and I know this happens to everybody, it's like you have your, uh, you do a lot of photography, and then you might do design work, like graphic design work. It's like you kind of have a split personality. It's like you want to have a unified uh, portfolio. So this Paul Tranny's portfolio, this one can be for all of my Photoshop work, and then I can take this one, edit it, and this one, this one can be for my more of my vector logo based work. So that's where I turn off all these other ones. And I might be turning off a lot of them. Wait for it, so many. And I would just keep some more of my typography, gra oh, I just clicked on that one. Typography, graphic design type work and not my Photoshop work is all I'm doing here, right? Let's turn it off, turn it off. And let's turn on these. Vector, 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 vector. Technically these skull flowers are actually vector. Bam, designer ties, not the movie poster. That's what I've done, right? We'll go ahead and go back go into work. So this is more of my uh, vector work almost. And again, I noticed I missed one up at the top. There we go. Got it. So it's much more light. Um, but I could use a potential different theme to kind of make up for how light this portfolio is, right? Can now use this theme. Let's change this title, right? Like so, not, not a huge fan of it. Make it extra bold, all caps. And there you have it. I can change the masthead options as well, but hopefully that makes sense, right? I'll update this live site. Now we have two websites, kind of showing, I guess, the different sides of my work. If somebody wants uh, a logo, I would probably send them this website and say, hey, look at all this vector logo type work that I do versus my other portfolio, which is much more uh, Photoshop based. So that's it. Cool, all right. Uh, by the way, yeah, somebody mentioned uh, video. How can you publish video on Behance? I think some people are already kind of tackling this, this question, uh, but I go in here, I click create project. It would be a new project and you can see right down here, video and audio, clicking right there. I would find my ba. Let's do it. I love how this is all on the fly. Let's go into the ambigram. Ah, uh, it's not the right format. So this is where I have to figure out what format uh, it's using because it's probably uh, an MPEG-4 and I have just an MOV. I don't know if it's going to load in or not. I have my doubts, but we will see. So basically that's what you do. It's They're all projects. If you load it in as a project, it could appear in your portfolio. Is the portfolio on Behance free? Yes, if you're a Creative Cloud member, uh, it is free. If anybody ha doesn't, maybe doesn't have Creative Cloud, um, still try to go there anyways and see what happens. Because you might actually get one for free, I have no idea. Uh, Ray Styles, thanks for hanging out. All right, cool. Uh, you can upload an MOV. So your file has updated set and we're converting it for you. I had no idea we even had this service, right? Uh, it can take a little while. That's, that's cool, right? While that's doing that, I can continue and upload an image. You'll always need a cover image. Logo, ambigram. Ah, there's the JPEG. Awesome. All right. Ah. 
There it is. Let's, let's make it a little larger, make it a little bit more unique. This one's gonna be very, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty bold. It's the only one that has a white background, which honestly isn't gonna look that great for my portfolio. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Anagram. Uh, Adobe Illustrator. I don't know why I put it in there too. Um, let's do that. Oh, that's not my last name. There we go. Boom. Boom. It's more graphic design than anything. Publish. Publishing it out, the video is still converting. Might take a little while, but that's okay. All right. And I could have swore I actually uploaded this at one time. Well, let's take a look. Let's go out to my profile. See, there it is, the latest version. Let's check on the video. Not quite, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But once it's ready, we want it to appear in our, uh, more of our vector-based uh, portfolio. So there it is. This goes back to the question when somebody was like, hey, can I use this for a client? Anytime I uh, add a project, it's automatically gonna update, not just this portfolio. Let's take a look. Edit Adobe portfolio. But right out here, let's edit my Photoshop portfolio, if you will. It's gonna update and put that project everywhere. So if you are using for a client, that might be something you don't want, basically. Turn off that ambigram, right? So I'd have to turn it off if you have a client um, and then update it. All right, cool, right? So we have a website, we have a portfolio. A far cry from what we used to have to do is we have to actually build it ourselves, right? What would we have to build? You'd have to build something in HTML or use some other service. Um, again, I'm just, I gotta, I gotta laugh at myself. This is from 1997. Look at it, it's so sweet. Look at, oh yeah. I love this. <laughs> it's like, oh man, look. Uh, let's move me over. Illustration, animation, virtuality. What the heck is virtuality? I have no idea. Right, this is this is kind of amateur. Like honestly, what I I was this was right after art school. I was painting and I was doing digital stuff and I was doing Macromedia Director and things like that. So this was a marriage of traditional illustration with digital. So that's the theme I was going for here. But I spared no expense when it came to effects. It's like oh, I'm gonna put this drop shadow. Right, it's gonna be so cool. Right. And oh yeah, email me down here. Okay, ah, oh, it's like so cool. I don't even know if these links may or may not work. Yeah, sure enough, they don't. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. animation. Oh, here we go, animation. Oh yeah, these are animation. This is done with a, I think I might have, oh, I did an image map. So that's what's happening. It's an image map uh, and should go into and play each one of these videos. So that logo that I created in Illustrator, I ultimately animated it and I created a whole, this was my um, animation reel basically, but I animated it as well. And you guys get the idea. Isn't this hilarious? I think it's funny. Okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, William was a drop shadow, a third party plugin. That would be interesting to know. I would think if Adobe had any plugin that it made, it would be the drop shadow one. But anyways, let's fast forward a year. I'm like, I know I'm gonna update this. By the way, that could have, that was probably from 95 to 97 is that earlier one. But here's again, just a new one. And you can see how, you know, you kind of need to refresh a lot of this stuff and uh, ultimately like change with the times. Cause here's like, oh, now I'm doing digital design and animation. And look at this font and these colors. Somebody's really into snowboarding or something, right? By the way, look at this. This is just old school, by the way. I hope you guys don't mind this kind of, uh, uh, this is just showing you how awesome Adobe Portfolio is because we do not have to program any of this. I was using frames. So this is a frame up at the top and this is a, 
this is a separate web page, right? Let's see if any of these. Look, I have rollovers. That was pretty cool back in the day. Let's like, click on it. Okay, experience, right? You get the idea. Freelance, education, you get the idea. Okay, cool, cool, cool. These are all frames, so when I scroll, I didn't want my navigation to disappear. I wanted to be able to just scroll inside of here, okay? Uh, yeah, Noor, you know it, because what happened here for most people, I want to know if anybody has a site like this. Please tell me you have a site like this. Cal, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Um, chances are, if you've been in the industry a while, you probably have something embarrassing like this out there, right? Here's some, there we go. Used to work for a newspaper and all sorts of things. <sighs> yeah, all right. Um, yeah. So uh, digital design, I did so much artwork. I, I wasn't even any good guys, I swear to you. Look, we had this, there was a, uh, I think this was done in authorware, this iNADS. <laughs> <laughs> installation and, and administration system. And I created this little robot that zipped around the screen and all that fun stuff. So you get the idea, right? You have all this old work. You ultimately, you probably ended up made a, making a flash site. And now we're at this, this stage where honestly, it's like, we'll use Squarespace. We'll use Adobe Portfolio. We'll go from this to this. And you can see what a difference it makes uh, ultimately, right? Cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> cool. All right. Ariana's hear hearing the dial-up noise and just watching maybe something load from the top down or kind of blurry to sharp or whatever the case may be, which is pretty, pretty wild. All right. We've covered a lot, haven't we? Uh, let's move on uh, to other areas. Here's another huge thing that I'm so glad every portfolio has. Contact form. Oh yeah, love it. The other Paul. It's okay if you have my email address, it's all right. All right, done. How nice was that? I didn't have to program a, t a contact form. Do you think it's important to show old work or have a more modern consistent, si consistent site? Uh, I personally think it's more important to show, um, don't, uh, here's the short of it, only show the type of work that you want to get. That's it, right? So in here, I only wanna show the type of work that ultimately I wanna get. So that's why I'm not showing anything old. Do I wanna do 3D printing these days? Hmm, I will, but maybe not. So only, only put in there like the type of work you wanna get. And if you, honestly, if you look at it and you're just like honestly embarrassed, just, Get rid of it. The nice thing is you're not getting rid of it permanently. So if, even if I go back over here, we'll go to my profile. Scrolling down even as I see this one, this is not a good Photoshop job, right? It's just not, it's not very good, right? I totally need to clean it up, right? But right in here, I can say, hey, you know what, unpublish. So I'm not deleting it, but I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling really, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling really strongly about it. If I move a project from Behance, it's automatically removed from the website. Let's find out right now, because I just removed the Calaveras. Let's go out to my portfolio, right? Here's my portfolio. Let's scroll down. Let's see if we see the woman with the flowers in her hair. Oh, Day of the Dead, fascinating. It looks like it actually does not. Let me just double check to make sure. All right. Uh, thank you so much for that. That is such a good question, Monica, because I just realized that it does not automatically remove it. If you select unpublish right in here, 
uh, it's the um, equivalent of just... So here's the short of it. This, what you see here, you can consider this an Adobe portfolio site because it works the same way. I unpublished it here. It's still out here, by the way. There it is. Day of the Dead, still turned on. So it's still gonna be published. So you will have to go to that site, turn it off. And uh, good question, because I actually thought I was gonna remove it, to be honest with you. Learn something new every day. Yes, exactly. You can change it uh, based on the job you're looking for. And you can start to elevate your, your best work. Like, I really like this one, this Bloom. It's like, okay, I wanna elevate this one to the top, just grab it, move it up, right? We'll have that, honestly, like the first image that you see, right? Okay. And I like this one here, split. Let's take those two, put those up at the top, right? And reshuffle accordingly. Cool. Uh, William, I always, uh, you're always conflicted about posting other than personal work. Yeah, um, yeah, you just got to make your own judgment calls with a lot of these. Uh, okay. Uh, Lisa's, Lisa's asking if you, if I recommend having a Behance portfolio, even if I have a personal website. Yes, 100%. Because right here, what I have is I have my own uh, Behance portfolio. But then if you go out here, it's like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm so much more than just a portfolio. Right. At the end of the day, you are much more than your uh, just a portfolio. So you're going to have your own website, hopefully. But this is why you'd have an Adobe portfolio, uh, and a, excuse me, and a Behance portfolio and a Behance website is right over here. Uh, discover essentially, right? People use Behance to find other artists and designers, so they can go in here. I want to search for um, a graphic designer. Uh, within the US in Colorado, right? And we'll even be more specific, we'll say Denver, because that's where I live. Oh, I accidentally clicked on something. Oh, there we are. Apply filters. All right, cool. Made shop, yes, Denver, into it. Um, and now that I think about it, what I want to make sure that I have going on for my portfolio is making sure. Let's see if the video has been pro. All right, the video is processed. Let's go into editing this project. Go into the settings. Um, discoverability. Um, you basically want to fill out all these fields possible because that's going to give you more search terms to be found to elevate your content on searches. What I was looking for. Uh, is uh, geolocation. So that's something I needed to look at. Like, I'm just kind of uh, figuring out where does it say Denver for this specific project. Um, let's go all creative fields. Okay, so there it is. Here, here it is. It actually did. It, it, it noticed that I just uploaded this today and actually appear in the search. So that's why you want to have a Behance profile slash portfolio as well. So you come up to these searches, you can potentially be contacted for work is all. Uh, there is somebody else with my same name. That's, that's my other account, uh, just so you know, just so I can creep on people. Just kidding. It's, it's a long story. 
I have two accounts for testing purposes. So I guess this is not that long of a story. <laughs> right, done and done. Yes, when you apply for a job in Behance, Porn, I have a portfolio there. Cheers to that. I still have 30 minutes. So this gives me an opportunity to kind of jump in and work on another piece and upload it. So if that works for you, that's what I want to do, okay? Since I have time, this is great. You guys really seem to like the Rhino. I'm gonna close that. Remember all those points, that was fun. Let's just close that, all right? Let's open this one. And for this one, I'm just gonna save as, and this is gonna be fish. We'll call this fish final, all right? So again, we're tightening up our portfolio taking a look at older pieces, seeing how we can update them. And I, I highly encourage people to do this because once you do look at your uh, Adobe profile, you will notice that there is some stuff in here that's just like needs to be reworked. And that's the case that happened here with this fish. So I'm th thinking, okay, I can make it look better. So let's just go ahead and save it. Click okay. Right, it's pretty, pretty cool. Actually still made Illustrator on the iPad, right? It's not quite out yet, but we'll be out soon, okay? So let's dive into this. Literally, since we're dealing with fish, select same fill color. Yeah, why not? Let's go into our colors and see what looks good. Okay, we can go with hot pink for starters. Because it's just a little bland. Let's take this one down here. In fact, let's lock that. There we go, let's take the second fish. Uh, we're gonna sort of flip it to the opposite color roughly. Okay, like so. Okay, so we've got a fun yin and yang. This is gonna be our final final. Right in here in Illustrator, it's like, okay, I've added color to it. I can take that a step further right in here. Rather than going with just a solid fill, I can add a gradient. So let's go down here. We can uh, add a gradient, click. Yeah, we get it. Go into gradient options. It's actually gonna open up your gradient panel. Get in here. Where's that pink? There it is, right? And now we can have this color be a lovely, lovely uh, like gold. So I like this transition like a lot better. In fact, since this is a koi fish, right, I, uh, I wanna have even more control over the color. So right in here, I'm gonna go into Edit Gradient and let's use Freeform Gradient. Clicking right there. It's always a gamble on what two colors it picks. Like, I don't know how it, how it picks it, uh, but ultimately it gives me this black, which I can change back to that yellow. And instead of this being white, we want it to fade into the uh, tail and different parts. I like that. So nice. Let's click up here and add another color, shall we? Let's make it red, right? Let's make this a fun koi fish. That's very colorful and like reflective. And ultimately, I'm just going to play around with this and see what happens. What do you think? Better or worse? It's worse. <laughs> it is worse. Anytime you edit a gradient, you'll look at it, you're like, oh, what happened? How do I change this? Oh, go to your gradient panel, edit gradient. Now I have access to any one of those little spot colors. And in this case, again, just like change it to something else. Oh, it's okay. That is okay. Just showing you these spot gradient colors. Not, not crazy about it. That could be a little bit more hot pink. Okay, there we are. Since this is a fish, should have tons of highlights, right? I could always add that to the detail layer. Oh, there it is. Oh, there you, there you are. Oh, you're hiding back there. I could have swore you had a highlight on your eye. There it is. Go ahead and give it a highlight. That looks a little bit better. Cool. Uh, the Creative Cloudfish. Ooh, I like that. It is. 
Uh, one thing I'm thinking about is like... Is, uh... I'm just realizing in Illustrator I can't rotate my canvas. I've never noticed that you can't rotate your canvas in Illustrator. It's totally fine. We're just gonna work upside down. But we are gonna add some more of these. Point right here, make it hot. Right down here, ultimately I wanted those two colors to kind of blend since it's a yin and yang. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do now, is play with colors and see what happens. No, doesn't, doesn't quite work, right? Let's go in here, we're gonna make these look metallic, that is the goal. Again, selecting this gradient panel, hit edit gradient. Change these accordingly. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. This this looks pretty good, right? With a little highlight, right? We go from uh, sort of a aqua or marine blue or a teal blue into a green into that yellow on the top. I'm into that. All right, there we are. Question is, does it need a background? You can rotate the artwork. Yeah, you could rotate the artwork, correct. I just want to rotate the whole canvas. I don't want to rotate and have to rotate it back. That's the only, that's the situation. Let's get rid of the stroke. Go in here and see if this works as well. What do you guys think? All right? I'm just playing with this. Is this working as a design? Rotate the monitor. <laughs> You guys are silly. You guys are so silly. Um, but yeah, here this is. I'm thinking about experimenting with more colors, right? Again, this is an older illustration I wanna to add to my portfolio. Actually, you know what it could use? It could use a little bit of a gradient out here. So for this fill, yeah, let's add a gradient like so. And make sure that's that. Kind of like that. There we go. So just kind of giving that like a little bit of a glow. That's what I'm going for. I'm open to suggestions. You could tell me this sucks. I'm losing the fish right down here. I'm kind of losing that one. Not sure if it's working. Uh, Joe says white background and he is the master graphic designer as we saw in his portfolio. So I should probably listen to you. You are right. Um, here's something else actually I might try. Right in here, let's add a new layer. We are going to add a circle. There we are. Oh, that's nice. All right, there's a little bubble. Taking this opacity down. And let's give this, uh, what do you think? Does it need a white outline? Basically, I'm making a bubble. All right, that's what I'm kind of looking at. In fact, you know what? I don't want that gradient in the middle. It's too much. Let's get rid of it. Get rid of it. Instead, add just a highlight. It needs to be just like straight up highlight like so. Okay, so that's what I might try. I might change this later on, but what I am gonna do is go to my brushes panel and add this as a scatter brush. Clicking okay, making it a scatter brush. We're gonna go uh, make this random. Again, we're trying to take this artwork to the next level. Don't need to worry about rotating it. We'll do 50. 200, why not? It should be 150 technically, but that's okay. Uh, scattering, yeah. 50, 150. 
right? This typically just takes some playing with. I'll click OK. It made this brush right over here. Zoop. In for pencil, you could draw out this line, click on that up, and now we have all of our bubble, bubbles. What's cool about this, and I, I should have made it a change the size, but now I have kind of control over um, this. In fact, right up here, let's start to play with this. Let's preview this and start to change the size. You know, I want the size to be smaller and I want to be more varied. Right, the spacing, the scattering as well. Let's take the scattering down, right? Negative 100 to positive like 150. Gives me uh, kind of what I like. Cool. Bubbles. We have bubbles. Okay. Can you make them look like they are in a globe? I could. Yeah. I just like, I like working with it like this. Look at how it just kind of reflows. This is why I love Illustrator and any vector tools. We just have like full control. Okay, so for this one, this actually needs to go the other way as well. So let's take this guy, copy, paste, rotate, bring it down. I just felt like it needed like a it needed to break the border a little bit. Oops. Right. I like the breaking of that uh, black circle. <sighs> Something like that. Cool. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, man. Davika wins Eagle Eye. Ah, oh, good stuff, man. Good call. Into it. I love, love you, love you guys. This attention to detail is uncanny. Davika, you are awesome. Let's just put on this fill layer. Pop right there. Good eye. You win. Wherever this goes, let's just put it there. All right, done, done, saved. Fish final, it's looking gorgeous. I think it's looking pretty good. But now we can go ahead and export this out and put it in our portfolio. Just make it pop, why don't you? It could use a thousand things. By the way, let's try one more thing while I'm in here, by the way, since I have the time. Add a new layer, lock everything else down. Maybe we'll grab a star, right? And uh, with no stroke, just a white star, right? That we could drag out. But now I just want to increase the, just like that. The lines, hold down the command key, right? And I can make them much more pointy, right? Uh, basically making this huge, like burst. I'm wondering if this cool burst will work, right? Might not. We'll go to the properties panel for this particular element. We're gonna change it since it's for the web. I can change this to like overlay. I don't know. Yes or no? Does it need the burst? Is the burst adding anything? I don't think so. Couldn't you also use the scatter tool with the basic brush? Um, you, the scatter tool, um, yeah, I'm not sure 100% what you mean. So there are, there, there is a, there is a symbol sprayer. I don't know if you're referring to the symbol sprayer. So turning that into a symbol and then spraying it accordingly. Symbol sprayer is fine, but it also makes all those individual elements that I gotta go in and modify. It's like, give me one line and have it random and then let me just adjust this simple line. So that's why I like it. Okay, so we got a no. Okay, we got, we got a bunch of no's. Nicole and Marsha say no. <laughs> Uh, hello there, Quila and Lindsay. Um, good to have you here. Mm 
Yeah, symbol sprayer. So symbol sprayer, you just have all these symbols that you gotta mess with. All right, so I got no on that. Um, just so you know how I did it, let's move this off to the side. Select your star. Um, and when you click and drag, use the arrow keys, right? Up and down. And then the command key will control the depth of each one of those like spires, if you will, right? So that's what that does. You could even go pro level if you want to. Let's take this down. Tim might know what I'm gonna do here, by the way. What if we have this like so? Ready? We'll hold down the tilde key, so the little squiggly line, and we'll go. Ooh, what did we just do there? We just made this fun design as well. It will uh, duplicate or replicate that star as I click and drag while I'm holding down the tilde key. Fun designs. Of course, each element's separate. There we have it, saving it, exporting this out. Let's get in on a portfolio. Doesn't need a suffix. There it is. Honestly, what this needs, this need, uh, <laughs> this needs highlights. It's funny when you like work on something, you step away or you see it smaller and you realize the fish are shiny. This needs just a bunch of highlights on the side. Uh, that's something I'll work on later, um, but that's okay. Okay, with that done, let's go in here, let's add this project. Load it up, add some text, K-O-I fish, what comes around goes around. Uh, it was colored on the desktop, right, in on the desktop. Colored in Illustrator. Another thing I can actually tweak with if I just want to play with colors, I would jump out, go right in here, make sure I can select everything. Let's get rid of these other two layers. Select everything, and uh, if I have, am ever unsure about colors, I'll do a recolor artwork. Right in here, we'll click Edit. I can lock all these down, right? Some of you probably already know about this but if I wanted to tweak the colors in a more consistent way and maybe find something new, like look at this. This one's really cool. Now I'm totally undecided. <laughs> ah, good question. Tim maybe can answer that question. Tilde key is the little squiggly line. All right, so yeah, I don't know. This one just kind of surprised me. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna mess with it. I think we're good here, right? I even like those highlights that are uh, happening from those um, the layer colors, right? But that's all I'm doing. Uh, there it is. Looks good. Let's continue. Yeah, and I apologize. I'm sitting here yapping away, realizing that I have not shared the schedule in a bit. Uh, it's all down below, by the way. Uh, hopefully you're here with me on behance.net at forward slash Adobe Live. Uh, but we have lovely Kathleen up next doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I think it's down to her second to last date. So get involved there. Photo retouching with Pierre 
Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge as well. These are all portfolio building exercises. Uh, then get into package design with the one and only Nick Longo. Love Nick. That's awesome. I'm, I'm getting rid of my tie, folks. I'm almost done here. Let's get this out of here. Uh, XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard, which wish him well. He's, uh, he's a good guy. And uh, then we have a design off this afternoon. So all portfolio uh, building exercises today, which is cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and switch over. Sure enough, share your work or promote your work. You can take that link and then share it out everywhere as I'm doing right now. Koi fish. What's up, Jason? I see you over there joining me on Periscope. Fantastic. Cool. So hopefully this all makes sense, right? We have that done. We go to my profile. Sure enough, here it is looking beautiful. And as we go to our portfolio, that's solely actually dedicated to um, more of our vector work, we'll go edit Adobe portfolio and just make sure that one is not in here. That's all I needed to do is remove it from this, uh, the Photoshop portfolio that I have. All right, turn that off, done, 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 done. So there it is. My other one is paultranny.adobe portfolio. Or am I, am I losing my mind? I'm probably losing my mind. Let's go out here. My portfolio, I apologize. View live site. Cool, down to the last couple minutes right in here. Yes, it is there. It just needs to load in. Not sure why it's not loading in yet, but hey, let's give it a second. Let's have some patience. The big thing is we want to just make sure it's here in here and turned on right there. It is. You get the idea Two port two portfolios. We have the Behance uh, profile, two portfolios made in Adobe portfolio, uh, a resume made in InDesign, as we can see, a logo and graphics we we're building out in Illustrator. Uh, I can't think of some, and nothing. We've done it all. We've done it all, Michelle and Marsha. Good. Caroline, go ahead and hit that like button. And thanks for hanging out with me. Because, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Doing all this is a lot of work, right? But we've come a long way from my old uh like resume as you can see right here to kind of where we're at today so uh really appreciate you guys monica and everyone i am uh, going to let you go and now you guys have my all my info and everything uh thank you neil thank you uh cal um so let me think about anything else that i need to mention uh any housekeeping type stuff. That's about it. I think I will see you tomorrow for the Photoshop uh, masterclass, which will be awesome from 9.30 to 10.30. Pretty much masterclass is all tomorrow, uh, but stick around for Kathleen because she's awesome. Um, yes, and you know, honestly, keep learning, keep updating. The, the, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna leave with this, with this one, one, uh, one statement. I never fault anybody for their own portfolio that's out of date. Because honestly, every, the, the person's portfolio that's up to date, they, there's a chance they might not have, they might not have work going on. Your own portfolio is the last thing that you do. So when I see somebody's portfolio that's out of date, I never fault them. I'm like, they must be actually working on client work because uh, your stuff tends to always kind of fall by the wayside. Uh, but do get it updated, you know, just share what you can create and uh, let's build this awesome community. Okay, does that sound good? So again, don't feel bad if your portfolio is not updated. Um, but if it is, congratulations, send me a link and all that good stuff. I'm gonna let you go, appreciate you. Have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, stick around for uh, Kathleen and the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Thanks everybody. I'll leave you with a schedule, thanks.